I know a lot of you are waiting for the conclusion of my custom ITX case made out of 3 8 inch steel plate, but I have another custom ITX case that I never finished, so I figured I might as well get to this one first. Let's do this thing! Today's video is brought to you by Patriot Viper and the V380 gaming headset. Here we find the gamer in their natural habitat. Though they may seem docile at first glance, the vibrant RGB lighting of the Viper V380 headset warns any observers to keep their distance. Camping the dark corners of the map, the gamer lies in wait. His sense of hearing heightened by the 7.1 surround sound, he's able to quickly locate any potential threats or prey. With the V380's noise-canceling microphone, their cries for aid will never be drowned out by the crunching of late-night onion-flavored snack rings. With their nightly frags secured, the gamer can now rest easy, for tomorrow brings another raid. But the gamer does not worry. With the aid of their companions, and a lair full of Viper gaming peripherals, like the V765 mechanical keyboard and the V551 gaming mouse, tomorrow's frags are nothing more than a click away. Check out the full lineup of gear from Patriot Viper by following the link down in the video description. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And don't worry that there's no beer glass on the table right now. I figured I'd crack one open once I'm done with the Dremel. On the table next to me is a system a lot of you may recognize. And no, I'm not talking about the Xbox One S. I'm talking about the Xbox One S that I'm planning on putting a gaming PC into. So this is a project I started over a year ago, back in January of 2021, and I just never got around to finishing. So I figured today we'd take a crack at it and see if we can at least get the rough assembly done and then figure out how we're gonna go from there. The whole idea for this project actually came from a previous project on the channel on could I build a single slot GTX 1650? As you can see, I successfully transplanted a Quadro K2000 cooler onto my GTX 1650. But what system was I going to install this into? It should be no surprise that I had a beer in one hand surfing eBay late one night when I came across this empty Xbox One S chassis, and these two ideas just kind of merged together. So the Xbox One S PC conversion project was born. Now, modding gaming consoles into PCs is a long-time habit of a lot of PC modding enthusiasts. However, this will be my first console conversion. Now, I was a little bit worried when the case first arrived, since it is only 4.2 liters in volume. That's smaller than pretty much any ITX case that I've worked with in the past, and this doesn't have any mounting hardware inside of it. Obviously, the biggest limiting factor of building a PC inside the Xbox One S is going to be height, as the entire case is only 63 millimeters tall, and there's even less clearance inside the chassis. I don't know if you've spec'd out any low-profile heat sinks lately, but there's not a lot that meet those requirements. Luckily, I already had a heat sink that fit the bill in the ID Cooling IS30. This thing is only 40 millimeters tall, which means it's actually lower profile than the IO shield on the back of the motherboard. So as long as the motherboard fit inside the chassis, so would the cooler. As a quick refresher for those who didn't watch the first video in this series, over a year ago, the system's going to be rocking an Intel Core i3 10100F 4-core 8-threaded processor with a 4.3 GHz Max Turbo. That'll be plugged into an ROG Strix B460i motherboard with 16GB of Corsair Vengeance 3200MHz DDR4. Obviously, given the small form factor of the Xbox, there's not going to be any room for an internal power supply. So I picked up a Pico ITX power supply that actually is capable of up to 250 watts. The downside of that is we end up with a massive external brick, but at least all the parts will actually fit inside the chassis. So what is the plan for today? Well, as you can see, I have a couple 3D printed parts here on my desk, and today we're going to permanently mount the motherboard into the Xbox chassis, but that's going to be a little bit more complicated than it might first seem. The bottom plate of the Xbox chassis has all of these raised ridges, which do help stiffen the plate, but they don't give me a good mounting surface so I can put a motherboard into it. Like they hadn't even considered that I'd want to install an ITX board into here. So I'm going to have to remove pretty much all of the internal structure out of the bottom plate so I can get my motherboard tray mounted in. Once the motherboard is mounted, we have one more problem we need to solve, and that is how are we going to remove the top of the case after we put it on the first time? because the order of operations here are install the motherboard tray, install the motherboard, pretty simple so far, put the graphics card on, and then install all the other bits and bobs and buttons to make this thing work as a PC. 
With the system all put together, all we'd have to do is take the top shell and snap it back into place. However, if I were to snap this back into place, I'd have no way of getting it back off. You see, the top shell mounts with all of these spring-loaded tabs, and unless I can get some kind of a spudger in alongside the motherboard, I'd have no way of releasing them. So, the first item for the day is a whole lot of dremeling and sanding to get the bottom of this chassis smooth, so we can start mounting the rest of our components and making sure everything is actually going to fit inside. Let's go ahead and get started. After about an hour or so of cutting and dremeling and sanding, we've got enough of this bottom case hogged out that we can start lining everything up. Now, obviously, when you're doing a case mod, every single component relies on the alignment of every single component. And for this, that all starts with the motherboard. So the plan for right now is to take my motherboard tray and set it down into the bottom of the case. But I need to make sure it's exactly where I want it to be so my motherboard gets in the right position. So what we're going to do is screw the motherboard onto the tray and then glue the tray down into the case. Now amazingly enough, this was my very first print of this motherboard tray and I got all the spacing right on the first try. First time I've ever designed something from scratch and not had to print it six times. So now when I go to glue the motherboard tray down, it won't flex or bend in a way that will prevent me from installing the motherboard properly. Now let's go ahead and put the top of the shell on and find out if this is actually gonna fit. And holy crap, that's actually gonna fit. It's actually gonna fit really well. Wow. Hate to say this, but hot damn I'm good. I want this to be as far this way as possible, so I make sure I have room for my graphics card in there. So my printer's not big enough to print the entire rear I.O. in one go, so I split it into two pieces, one for the graphics card and one for the motherboard. And of course, I got that spacing wrong on my first try, but that should look something like that when we're all done. Yeah, I think right there is where we're gonna want it. Let's see if we can't lock that down into place. Now for the nerve wracking part, because um, I only get one shot at this, and that is actually applying the super glue and putting this thing down in a very permanent fashion. Uh, I have it marked out where I want the edge of the motherboard tray to land, and that is a 12.5 millimeter offset from the right side of the case. That gives me enough clearance with the graphics card over on this side, but still enough room to breathe over on this side. So, uh, I don't think there's anything left to do, but just go for it. So I've got some medium flow cyanoacrylate. And here we go. All right, and three, two, one. Twelve point six on both sides. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna give this a little bit of accelerant. Okay. That's a part for the computer I'm building. Oh, it makes That one's a secret. Shh, I haven't told him about it yet. Oh. All right, two amazing things happened just now. Number one, I think I got this motherboard tray down and in line on the very first try. And in fact, the motherboard screw holes 
line up perfectly with the standoffs underneath. And number two, I managed to do it without gluing my hands to the bottom of the case. And hey, look, it works. <laughs> all right. Now, while I was lining all this up, I'm sure you noticed that I was able to put the top of the case on and take it off repeatedly with no issues. And that's because I removed all of the tabs that hold the top of the case on. Now, I need to figure out how I can actually put it on there and keep it on there. Now, I think the way I'm gonna do this actually does, now I think the way I'm gonna do this actually doesn't require any modification of the top shell at all. There are gonna be some visible screws on the lower chassis, but I think that's a pretty minor concession to make for how good this is gonna look when it's all done. I think I can use this completely unmodified 3D print some tabs that I can glue in right here with some threaded inserts that can then go directly on top of here. And then I'll just use some nice truss head screws right along the bottom here. And that should keep it with still a fairly stock look. The screws will be visible, but they'll be very easy to get on and off and they'll hold everything nice and tight. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Well, that is definitely not a stock Xbox, but you'd never know it from the front. Obviously, we are still a long way away from completing this project, but I think I'm down to creating the list of what needs to be finished. Obviously, the graphics card is just kind of flopping around in the back here, and that's gonna be shored up by installing the rear I.O. Now, I've already got a pretty good start to what that's gonna look like, but I do have a little tweaking that needs to happen before I permanently install it. But uh, as you can see, it's gonna look pretty darn neat by the time we're all done here. Secondly, if you remember from the single slot GTX 1650 project, you might remember that instead of making a fan header and doing it the proper way, I just kind of unplugged the PWM pins and jammed them into the end of a fan extension. Uh, I want something a little bit neater than that if it's going to live permanently inside a PC, so we'll have to figure out a solution for that as well. Beyond that, I think it's just a little bit of finish work and cleaning this thing back up so it looks like brand new, and we'll have ourselves a working Xbox but you're gonna have to wait till the next video to see how that turns out. In the meantime, if you're interested in any of the hardware I used in today's video, I will have as many links as I can down in the video description. Obviously, you're probably not gonna be able to find a GTX 1650 from Dell at a reasonable cost, but I will put as much down there as I possibly can. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is down in the video description. As always, thank you all so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Well deserved. Well deserved. Beer for today is from Ratchet Brewery, just around the corner in Silverton, Oregon. This is the Moto Floozy Blonde Ale, clocking in at 5.7%. Oh, crisp, clean. Just a little bit of hop, but near the back end of this one. That is quite crisp and quite good. This will make even a Rainier drinker thinking about going to craft. Man, it's because there's actually beer in here, Red. Look at how clear that beer is. That is insanity. Like, I can see the camera through it. <laughs> anyway, if you happen to be in the Central Oregon Valley, get yourself some Motofluzzi. I definitely recommend it.